in this section, we're going to work on another little application, another little game of sorts inside of DartPad to get a better idea of how streams work. This game is a little bit more complicated than the button one, so let's take a look at a quick diagram. Okay, so we're going to make a word guessing game. Uh, you, you and I are going to set a kind of secret word inside of our application. We'll then present our users with an input and a button. Our users are going to type in some guess at the secret word inside of here, like, I don't know, banana, and then they will click on the guess button. When user clicks on that button, we're going to look at the text inside that input, we'll compare it against the secret word, and if the user guessed correctly, then we'll print out a message telling them, hey, nice job, you guessed the word. To make the game a little bit more challenging, we're going to say that a user can only guess four times. So in other words, after the user clicks on this thing four times, that's it, they don't get to play anymore. Okay, so this one is gonna be a little bit more complicated than the last game we put together. Let's first begin by taking a look at some documentation. I know I said that we weren't gonna look at it too much, but we'll bend the rules here. We're gonna look at two functions that are going to make putting this game together a lot more straightforward. Okay, so I've got my stream class documentation here. Remember, you can get here by going to api.dartlang.org. Then inside the stream class, I'm going to scroll down to the methods section. So here's methods, and inside of methods, I'm going to look up a function called take. So down, 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 here's take right here. So I'm going to click on take, and we'll take a look at the documentation for it. So we call the take method on a stream. When we call take on a stream, we pass in a count or an integer. When we call this, it's going to make sure that the stream is only going to process the count number more events. And then after we have received count events through the stream, the stream will then say, I am done, you can do nothing else with me. So to put that into diagram format, it kind of looks a little something like this. So if we called the take method, on the button on click stream, and we passed in the number four to say that we only want to allow four guesses, then this is what we would have. Maybe when our application first boots up, the user immediately enters some text into the input and then clicks that button. And then maybe in this case, they get it wrong. So then they change their input, they click it again, still wrong, click it again, still wrong. And then after a little bit more thinking in there, they click it again. Now at this point, the user has clicked on that button four times. Because they've clicked on four times, and we called take with the number four, the stream then marks itself as being done. When a stream is marked as being done, it can no longer receive any more data inside of it, so no more processing goes on. In addition, when a stream is marked as done, we can make use of that listen function that we used a little bit ago. I'm gonna find the documentation for listen really quickly here. Here it is right here. So on the listen function, we made use of the onData argument right here. That's the first function that we've been passing into listen. We saw a moment ago that we can also provide a onAir function. We can also pass in a onDone function. And so if we pass in onDone to our stream or into listen, after calling count or take four on it, then onDone will be called and we can print out some message on there to tell our user that, hey, sorry, but you lost the game. Okay, so the other thing I want to mention is how we can somehow check to see if the user has entered the correct word. So we just saw how we can limit the stream to only allow four guesses, but to check to see if the user entered in the correct word, I'm going to again go down to the methods section, and under there I will find the where function right here. So with the where function, we can pass in a function to where, so that's, that's going to be this test function that you and I are going to pass in. That test function will be called with whatever data is flowing through the stream. Then inside there, we can return a Boolean of either true or false. If we return false, then this event flowing through the stream will be discarded. And so in our example, let's say that a user clicks and makes a guess one time. You and I are then going to look at the value of the input. And if the user has the incorrect value inside there, we will return false from the where function. And that will cause this click event to kind of like drop out of the stream. And it will not pass on to anything else inside of the stream. 
Now the key thing to keep in mind here is that the order in which we apply all these different functions definitely makes a difference. Because if we first call take, or excuse me, if we do the opposite, if we first call where on our stream, then we're going to be trying to discard items out of the stream, and we will not be kind of incrementing it against our max count number of guesses as you'd probably expect. Okay, so that's kind of a description of the different functions we're going to use. So let's take a quick pause and we'll come back to the next section and put this little application together inside of Dartpad.